Hey guys, my name is Shai, and today I am doing a pick a deck tarot reading, focusing on what is it that your shadow is trying to show you? What is your shadow showing you today, right now, in the current vibe that you're in? I was inspired to do this because this morning, man, I woke up and I was like, what is going on? The vibe is weird today. And um, my husband gets up a few hours after me because I get up early for work. And he wakes up and he shuffles out into the kitchen. He's like, what is with today? The vibe is so weird. So I know I'm not the only one feeling it. Um, and of course, you know, you're synchronizing with this whenever, whenever it is that you're watching it. But so I had a few like shadow work things come up for me, but it was actually pretty, pretty smooth. I was pretty proud of myself for just kind of, you know, acknowledging it, seeing it and just existing while taking steps to work through it. And um, once I did that, I was able to like recognize this energy, recognize this vibe, this whatever pocket of energy that we're in. I was like, okay, I get this. I, I remember this. I remember this. I've been here before, right? This is like, how do I even describe it? Let me describe it like this. It's like, this is a time for like black lipstick and trench coats and fishnet stockings. Okay. This is like time for candlelit vigils and ceremonies in the mountains, in the forest. This is a time for like symphonic metal, okay? This is a time for even handcuffs and blindfolds. This is a time for the intellectual study of ancient pagan rituals or any, especially anything that skews kind of dark. Um, this is a time for like glasses of blood red wine, right? Um, that kind of vibe. It's very occulty. It's very occulty, but it, it, it's excuse kind of, um, kind of intellectual actually. So I've got <laughs> the Thoth deck, Murder of Crows tarot, and the Egyptian tarot. So if you haven't already, go ahead and pick your deck and we will get into the reading. Hello and welcome to everybody who picked the Egyptian tarot. Let me just get this out. Shuffle on camera. Blah, blah, blah. I have not used this deck in a while. Okay, so what does your shadow want to tell you? So any like unpleasant, scary, anxiety inducing, or just kind of off vibe that you're experiencing right now, it's, it's trying to show you something and it just wants to be seen. It just wants to be acknowledged. And that might be easier. <laughs> that'll be easier for those of us who are experiencing their shadow when it manifests like internally, right? When you feel something inside of yourself and you go, um, like maybe you had nightmares last night or something and you wake up and it's like, oh, what's that, right? Um, so it's kind of easier to integrate the shadow when it's an internal experience. But if you have, um, like whenever we reject our shadow for a like a long time, like for many, many lifetimes, if it's something we've really rejected, really put out there, um, then then you experience it externally in the um, in the form of like events happening in your life or, you know, people <laughs> being not how you would ideally want them in your life, right? And that's when it's more difficult. So it can be coming up either way for you, but what what is it that, that you need to see and acknowledge? Okay, first up, the Knight of Wands. Four of Swords, Two of Pentacles. Okay, before I talk about that, I want some two Oracle cards as well. I'm going to use Black Moon Astrology. 
the Four of Swords, like, just to jump right in, right? The Four of Swords, this is a healing moment, but uh, in between the Knight of Wands and the Two of Pentacles, it might not feel like you're healing, right? You might feel like something is being done to you, like more trauma is being done to you, um, and it can be hard when you're in between this... Um, Like, something is too rapid and something has you off balance. It's like you're in this chaos, but the invitation is to be the eye of the hurricane. The eye of the hurricane. The eye of the hurricane is where you can find healing. Um, if you have been finding yourself, like, doing a bit of, like, a wiffle waffle <laughs> type of thing, like, doing one thing and then immediately regretting it or doing one thing and then immediately doing the opposite thing. This could even be small things like taking the juice out of the fridge and then putting it back and getting the water and then putting it back and getting the pop, you know, <laughs> or it could be big things like, um, sending somebody an email and instantly regretting it, right? Or accepting a job offer and then like immediately saying, oh no, I actually didn't want to accept the job and then immediately regretting that you rejected it, that kind of thing. Um, so it's like, stop, okay? <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the message here is like, stop, um, actually stop taking action. Stop taking action. Especially if, if there's chaos, you know, with this Knight of Wands, right? This is very, very fast, very, very rapid, very, very fiery energy. And it's like rapid communication, rapid action. And it's not um, which can be good, right? That's not necessarily bad, but we are kind of reading these cards in the shadow aspect because this is like, what is your shadow showing you, right? So this is kind of like um, unhinged activity, unhinged, uh, like, honestly, I'm getting like the shadow aspects of Aries, um, like too, too much action, too much action without, like, get that glare off that card. Um, You need to slow down. You need to take a break um, and pull your energy back out of the chaos. Um, the kind of tough love message I have to pass on to you <laughs> that I understand you might not be, you know, fun for you to hear is that if you are experiencing a lot of chaos and instability, either in your inner mind, your inner inner emotions, like in your inner state or in your reality, in your physical reality, especially with other people, somehow, some way, the way you have been taking action and the way you have been taking action specifically without sober second thought, right? The way you've been acting and reacting and doing things, somehow, some way, that is kind of stirring the pot you're like energetically stirring the pot and contributing to the chaos that you're experiencing right um this is the card for you um holy shit <laughs> yeah okay uh, i was just talking about the shadow aspect of aries and just to be clear if anybody's watching this and you're in aries it's like i love and admire aries energy so much and i find it so empowering and inspiring and it inspires me to positive action all of the time so this is not like me saying anything like bad about aries in general because of course all energies have their shadow aspects right um but it's like so aries shadow aspect is to act without sober second thought right to just to just act and to be acting all the time to always be doing to always be rushing into things and especially to when Aries gets really destabilized they can be like and it, it's not necessarily a an Aries person right but Aries energy can be ping-ponging around just constantly um trying to do trying to do trying to do all the time and it creates chaos it creates chaos and it creates just <laughs> a general lack of stability so essentially your shadow experience is getting you to look at chaos, look at the chaos in your life, look at the lack of stability in your life, right? Two of pentacles um, can be, you know, it's it's a balancing energy, but when the two of pentacles is in shadow, when it's um, out of balance, well, then it's incredibly out of balance. It's like you can't keep juggling that many balls in the air. You can't keep walking on the shifting sands. Everything is too chaotic and... Yeah. <sighs> 
you guys probably um, really desire peace and stillness, but perhaps you have not experienced that in a long time and maybe you're wondering, when will peace come to me? When will I find peace? I just want peace. I just want peace with... I want to experience peace with the people around me. I want to no longer be plagued by chaos. And especially I want to no longer be plagued by people who, you know, some of you, if you're really in the extreme with this, you're you're having run-ins with people who are who have done you harm, who have in some cases done you extreme harm, maybe even done for some of you, like done your children harm, right? Like for somebody, this could easily be like the worst case scenario with an ex like, especially if that ex is the parent to your child, right? Um, it could be like, it, this could go that extreme. Um, so, <laughs> if you would like to look this right in the eye, look it head on and be like, okay, I'm going to acknowledge what my shadow is showing me. I'm going to look at all this chaos in my life, look at all this chaos in my environment and go, how, 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 how can I, um, you know, calm the storm, right? How can I find the peace? And that's the Four of Swords, the card of the most extreme in action, right? The Four of Swords is like completely stopping, going almost completely comatose, right? It's like, <laughs> I, I just, I could repeat it over and over again. You, you, the message for you guys, well, like what your experience is trying to show you. It's just stop, like stop, like stop the presses, stop the activity, stop the action, stop the thinking, just stop, stop and do nothing, stop and sit. And this could be stop for, I mean, it really depends on your situation, right? Um, you could just need to stop and take a breather for five minutes and maybe that could do it for you, right? Um, for some of you, if this is like an extreme thing happening in your life where you've been in extreme chaos for maybe your entire life or all of your adult life or something, this is like, take a massive time out, possibly for weeks or months, right? And um, in fact, if you have recently had a life event that stopped your life, right? That put you in a place of feeling trapped, of feeling like you don't know how to move forward, of feeling like you're just trapped, right? Because Aries doesn't want to, this kind of Aries energy doesn't want to be trapped, right? Aries wants to constantly be independent and be acting and be doing. Um, so if you guys are stuck or forced into stillness, really settle into that because that is the universe um, helping you get calibrated, helping, putting you into the eye of the storm so that you can calibrate, so that you can find stillness because you will find inner peace in stillness. You find inner peace in stillness. You will, you will not find inner peace by constantly acting and reacting to events that perpetuates chaos because especially if you react to something when you're agitated or you react to something when your emotions are running high, um, any type of emotion. If you're, you're, if you're in a highly agitated, um, fast moving state and you react to someone or react to a life event, if you, if you take action from that destabilized place then that action then you just destabilize the water around you like your inner vibration vibrates to the world around you and then it just comes back at you and you're just constantly stirring the pot you're constantly muddying up the pond you're just making waves for yourself so <laughs> your shadow is trying to tell you to stop you're trying your shadow is trying to tell you to slow way down slow way down and kind of um have one of those really unpleasant talks with yourself, right? And like, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I know this reading is kind of like, might be hard to listen to, which is not typically the kind of reading I like to do, but it was what I was led to do today. And so I just want to say like, I don't want to be um, like shitting on you guys, right? Because let me just tell you uh, a few years ago when, you know, I, I, it was almost like I was a completely different person, okay? I was like so high strung, so just stressed and unpleasant and grumpy and cranky and angry and like full of rage. Like I was full of rage. I was like dr drowning in my own rage. Okay. And I eventually had to sit down. This is during my Saturn return. <laughs> I was in my Saturn return. And finally, when life like ground me down into the dirt, I had to sit down and have a chat with myself and be like, look, shy, you're just a heinous, hateful bitch. Like you need to knock this off. <laughs> right? And that was like my, you know, proverbial kind of come to Jesus moment where I just had to look at myself and just, <laughs> you know, 
And um, that was really not fun to do, but I did it. And after that, I was able to drastically change my like my energy, right? I had to admit, I had to admit that like, like all of the, I was manifesting all these difficult situations in my life because I was so angry and hateful or like, really, like I was like, <laughs> I was horrible. I like, I hate thinking of myself back then. It's just like, blah, like, why was I like that? Oh my goodness. I mean, I know why I was like that, but you know, so I know exactly how unpleasant this can be, right? But if, if you're like in an extremely chaotic situation and you're having to like sit down and look at yourself and go, how am I contributing to the chaos, right? I, I know that that's not fun. <laughs> okay. So I like, I, I completely get it. Like I've been there um, and try to look at it from the bigger picture, from like the long-term picture, from your higher self's perspective or from your future self's perspective, right? In two years, you're gonna be able to look back at this and go, wow, remember that moment when I like realized that I was perpetuating the chaos in my life? Remember that moment when I really realized that I could just slow down and find peace within no matter what is happening around me? That was, that was the moment that changed everything. So, you know, I'm not worried about you guys. And even though I can totally empathize with the energy that you're going through with how, with the difficulty that you're in but you know from my perspective since i'm sitting up here completely detached from the details of your life i can really like see that this can be such a bright bright beautiful moment of healing and a turning point for you so really even though this sucks it's like uh it's only gonna suck for now right once you get through it <laughs> oh there we go there's the happy message <laughs> once you get through it then the love comes in i've just been talking about you know finding the inner peace that's in your heart chakra this is the heart chakra card here are the dolphins coming through teaching you to play teaching you to see the positive to to, to reframe your challenges and your difficulties and your struggles and your stresses and your anxieties and your angers and whatever it is reframe them reframe them right Instead of going, ha, like, you know, of course we all say, why is this happening to me, <laughs> right? Re rewrite the script, right? Rewrite the script. Instead of saying, why is this happening to say, like, why is this happening to me? Say, what if this is happening for me? How is this happening for my highest good, right? Sometimes we need to go through a crisis. Sometimes we need to kind of hit the wall, and, you know, bounce back off and be kind of lying on the ground, kind of dazed and confused and going like, what the hell's going on? Because that way, then you can get up and it's like a clean slate. It's the, that's the moment when you can recalibrate. And for you guys, because you are like, in fact, you are very, very like strong and you're very intense and you're very fiery. You know, some of you might be Aries or other fire signs, but it's like, it doesn't matter that, that that's the energy that's in you. You have so much power inside of you. And it's like the only problem is that your your power has kind of turned on yourself. It's like you it's almost like an act of self cannibalism or maybe a better analogy would be um like an autoimmune disorder. An autoimmune disorder. Um you know, if autoimmune disorders kind of fascinate me, I actually have like two people very close to me have had autoimmune disorders. Um so I'm interested in that and it's you know, the autoimmune disorder is when the body's immune system, the immune system is supposed to protect you, but when it goes wrong, your immune system starts attacking your own body, right? And that can manifest in, as like, for example, Crohn's disease, where your immune system basically starts slicing up your intestinal tract and, it, and then you can't eat and you could die, right? It, it's like that, it's horrible. So, you know, and there's many other types of autoimmune diseases, it doesn't have to be that, but I'm just using that as an example for, it's like how your energy, you're so powerful um, and you have this like warrior fiery spirit um, but it's just that, you know, events in your life, right? All the struggles you've gone through, all the traumas you've experienced in this life and in past lives, right? Like th there's a reason for you to be the way you are. Don't beat yourself up about it. You've, you've, your higher self has put you exactly where you are. So, because this is all part of your journey, right? You're all growing into your future selves where this will all make sense and you will understand why you chose this journey so don't feel bad like you've done nothing wrong everything is unfolding the way it's supposed to unfold you're you're good right don't 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 heap more like self-doubt or shame or guilt on yourself or judgment on yourself none of that just um like look where are you like attacking yourself where ha is your fiery spirit folding in on yourself and like almost like burning yourself right 
um, and find a new way to direct that energy. Find a new way to direct that energy so it's not folding back on you, right? I just keep thinking of, I think for a lot of people, this is like a, about relationships. Of course, not all of you, but some of you, this is about a relationship. And if you keep finding yourself in like toxic romantic relationships, maybe it's time to completely take a break from romantic relationships, at least for a while, maybe a few months, right? It's like no more dating for a few months. That could be something that, you know, some of you could benefit from, right? Um, and in that time, like just focus on like a creative project instead of putting your energy into romantic entanglements, <laughs> um, find some kind of creative project or just focusing on building up your health, right? Um, like exercising or for some of you, it might just be literally just rest, right? Literally just rest, just focusing on building up yourself, building up your own world, right? Um, so in fact, I would go far, so far to say is identify the area of your life that is chaotic. If it's, if you've been like dating a lot and you're just getting a string of bad dates and or like worse, right? There's kind of an invitation here to take a break <laughs> from dating, right? Or take a break from romantic relationships for a little while. It doesn't, you know, however long is however long. Um, if this is, like somebody who's really burnt out in the workplace invitation here to like take a vacation if all you can do is take like a friday off so you get a long weekend it's like do that but and then also pull your energy back at work right stop giving so much at work if you're getting burnt out at work so it's like identify the area of your life where chaos is happening and then try to take a break from that go into stillness right and of course then it's look like <laughs> go within, go into your heart center, go in your heart center to find the fun, find the fun. You can, even if you live nowhere near the ocean, nowhere near anywhere dolphins are, you can still connect with dolphin consciousness. Just sit in silence and reach out to them. They are higher dimensional, multidimensional consciousness that they, they can, you know, their, their higher selves can feel you. You can connect with, with dolphins and they can teach you how to play, how to find the fun. Do something, in fact, just for fun, just for fun. You, so most of you are probably pretty serious and have been quite um, fixated on some kind of pursuit. <laughs> um, do something just for fun. Whatever brings you joy. It can be as simple as going to the park down the street and just laying in the grass, right? It can be as simple as going to get a milkshake. Maybe you don't typically like to drink milkshakes, right? Because they're not good for you. But, you know, maybe you can treat yourself to a milkshake. <laughs> like literally whatever the perfect day off sounds like to you. What Just imagine what would be the perfect day off. Because even, uh, even if you have little kids, even if you are a single parent and, you know, and you think you can't ever get a day off, you can get, you can find a day off, right? You can find somebody to watch your kids for one day and you can take that day off and spend it like in a moment of rejuvenating your soul in stillness. Anything that makes you feel like relaxed and rejuvenated. And if you're thinking like, you know, if somebody's sitting there going, there's no way I can get a day off. There's no way like nobody can watch my kids. I can't get a day off of my small business, whatever it is. Put it out to the universe. Be like, universe, I could use a miracle here. Like, I could, I need some help. Like, I especially say, hey, if you help me, if you align me to my day off, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to take a day off and I'm going to relax and I'm going to have fun and I'm going to find the calmness and I'm going to pull my energy back out of the chaos and it's going to be my day to recalibrate. Right? <laughs> so, yes. I think that's it for you guys. So, and you know, you guys are so like strong and fiery that I'm not worried about you guys at all. I know you got this. It, it's just that for you guys, like go sitting in stillness and doing nothing, taking time off and just being calm and quiet and refraining from activity, especially refraining from reactivity that's probably one of the only things you guys struggle with so that's why it's coming up in your shadow that's why your shadow is showing it to you and it, just remember that if you can cultivate more moments of stillness more moments of inner peace then that starts to reflect in your reality if your reality continues to show you chaos 
it's reflecting the chaos that is um, moving inside of you. But those chaotic frequencies are just frequencies. You can release them. You can let them go. You can replace them with peaceful frequencies within. And then your reality will reflect back to you the peaceful frequencies that you hold within. So I love you guys. Wishing you so much luck on your journey. Bye. Hello and welcome to everybody who picked the Thoth deck. This deck is always a little interesting. <laughs> always a little interesting because it's, um, you know, obviously designed by Aleister Crowley, um, who some of you will know as an interesting character. <laughs> so let's find out. What is your shadow trying to show you? With this... I can already tell you, like with this this deck, there's strong, strong, strong Sagittarius and Capricorn vibes, okay? Sagittarius and Capricorn. Um, particularly the more deeper, darker, less well-explored aspects of Sagittarius and Capricorn. Let's just see what comes up. Okay, Five of Wands with Strife. So, in conflict, <laughs> Princess of Discs, Earth Energy, that's Capricorn Energy, the Moon, and it was upside down, Seven of Swords with Futility. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I just looked up now and saw that you couldn't see that. <laughs> Oops. Um, that's actually symbolic. So I'm just thinking it, it was like you couldn't see it, but not because it was too dark. You couldn't see it because it was too bright, right? These cards were reflecting too much light and it was blinding um, you to the details and to the color. And the solution to that was to turn down the light, to refocus and turn down the light. Interesting. Knight of Discs. <sighs> More Earth energy. The bottom of the deck is the sun, which is the energy you're moving away from. So normally the sun is a beautiful sign to receive, but when it's on the bottom like that and in a shadow reading, and we just had that strange message about being blinded by the light. To me, this feels like you've been burned. You've been burned by the sun. You've been burned by the sun. Okay, so this could have happened to you recently. Like, you might know exactly, yeah, 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 I was, I was burned, right? <laughs> like, that person or that situation, whatever, that burned me. Like, yes, I know what that is. Um, if you're like, I don't know what's burned me, this is... Um, past life trauma stuff <laughs> um or uh even repressed memories okay so if some of you had very traumatic childhoods you could have a repressed memory from something happening to you um also especially if for all of my star seeds watching for some of you this is uh an experience you have had on a ship, um, also most likely an experience with the genetic engineering projects where you were taken up to a ship and you were taken, you were taken up to the ship by your free will. It was like a contract you signed in this life. You were going to go up to this ship, but of course it was, um, not a pleasant experience for you. And it felt, even though it was consensual, it still felt like torture, right? Even though it's, even though you did consent to it on, on many levels, it still felt like you were being tortured. And of course that memory was removed from you. But if this is really resonating, especially uh, some of you might have no idea about this, but if like, if you just like got really emotional while I was talking about that, um, or you can getting that feeling, then this is your first synchronicity, um, coming up for you where you're going to be learning more about your involvement in, you know, the hybridization projects, the gen genetic engineering projects. And that is like really, really tough. I know because I've been 
kind of working through this for the past few months. It's the kind of thing that comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. And, um, you know, you could have um, donated your DNA, you know, having your sperm collected or your eggs collected. You could have been impregnated and then had the fetus removed. Um, you know, so you could have hybrid children. The, like the options are kind of endless here. <laughs> and um, if you know you have issues with your sacral, your sacral chakra, um, like any, anything to do if you have like any type of conscious or subconscious baggage or hangups with sex or sexuality, this is all part of this. It's all one thing. <laughs> um, or if even if you have like, if you have fears of pregnancy or fears of like not being able to become pregnant, it's all part of this, all, all, all of this, you know, that's not going to be the thing for all of you, <laughs> of course, but for a large like chunk of you, it's revolving around that type of theme. And um, I've actually been wondering if this was going to come up in a reading because I was wondering if I should talk about it. I was wondering, if, I've been wondering if I should make a video about it, but I figured, um, you know, if I'm really supposed to talk about it, it was going to come up in a reading. So here, here you go. <laughs> so anyway, so you've had some type of really, really intense, uh, like invasive experience, like an intense invasive experience that you, that you almost like forgot about, right? For some of you, this could also be experiences of being tortured in a past life, different types of torture experiences. So, you know, this is, um, this is like the big, deep, big, bad shadow thing. And, um, these past experiences that you can't quite remember, but that you like vibrationally know are there, caused a lot of confusion for you. Like think into different areas of your life. Where do you feel conflict, right? Where do you feel strife? This five of wands. What is an area of your life that is constantly conflicted? Constantly conflicted. Like maybe you want to have a loving, committed, lifelong partnership like in a romantic relationship, but it just never, there's always like this problem, right? Um, or if you always want to be able to enjoy any type of intimacy, emotional intimacy or sexual in intimacy, but you never can really relax, right? You just can't relax. And it's like, even if your partner is doing everything right, and even if you love your partner and you feel like you want to open up emotionally or, you know, in the bedroom, whatever it is, it's like, but you just never quite feel comfortable and you just can't ever relax, like can't ever relax, right? That type of thing. Um, and you can be get, you can be getting to feeling like it's, futility, right? Like futile. Like this is just never going to work for me, right? That feeling of like, why am I like this? Am I broken? Why do, why am I like this? Like, what is it? What is it about me? Why, why am I like this? I see other people having more like regular healthy <laughs> experiences. Why can't I have it? Right. <sighs> Interestingly, we got the princess of disc and the knight of discs, earth energy. So this to me is saying that it, all of this rather abstract trauma, right? So for some of you, yes, it was a childhood thing, but I think for the majority of you, this is either um, like an experience that you had like as an adult, but your memory has been removed because you were on a spaceship <laughs> type of thing, or it's a past life. But at any rate, you've lost the memory. So you don't, you don't even know that you're traumatized. You like don't even know. And you might even feel bad by you might even feel like you shouldn't identify as someone who has been traumatized, right? Maybe you've even had people ask you, like, have you ever had any traumatic experiences? Do you, have you survived any trauma? And you go, no, no, I haven't. Like my childhood was, you know, yeah, like sure. It wasn't always happy, but like nothing traumatic happened to me, right? It just kind of sucked. <laughs> or, you know, you can think of different things and go, yeah, well, that was really hard, but I can't really say it was traumatic, that type of thing. So because you see other people who have been kind of more obviously traumatized and you don't want to like, infringe on you know you know how it is it's like you don't want to take away from their experience by comparing yourself to their experience but here's the thing like you have experienced trauma you just don't remember it right and even if it's just it's even if it's a past life right this could be just a completely different life a completely different body but that trauma still echoes through and you still feel it so if you've ever 
like wondered, <laughs> like, why do I sometimes act like a traumatized person if I've never experienced any trauma? It's like, it's coming from another life or coming from a memory you don't know that you had. So it's like this deep subconscious trauma that is vibrating in and it's like affecting your daily human life like literally because it's like stuck in your chakras right especially your sacral and your solar plexus chakra it's stuck in there i mean all your lower chakras <laughs> it's stuck in there and with this moon card being in reverse you can't it's like you can't figure it out you just can't figure it out it, it has been eluding you and maybe you it, it's eluded you so much you'd never even realize that you need to focus on it right <laughs> It's, it's just obscured by clouds. It is in the mystery. It's in the mystery. I want to get a couple of Oracle cards on this. So what I will say is that um, your shadow wants to show you that... Okay, that's the, that's the card. Cord, card? Cord? Card? Scorpio, I transform. I'll talk about that in a second, but this is perfect. This is perfect because Scorpio, I mean, I guess I can talk about it now. Scorpio, this is the, like the death card. This is transformative energy. This is eighth house energy as well. Like this is, come on, this is <laughs> Scorpio energy. That's all about, um, you know, sex and trauma <laughs> and hidden experiences, um, but also transforming and learning through that, transforming through it, being the butterfly who comes out of the cocoon, right? But anyway, so your shadow is trying to draw your attention. Like whatever you've been seeing in your environment, or maybe it's been coming through a lot in dreams, nightmares, or just weird feelings that you cannot put your finger on. Like just imagine going out on a date um, and you're looking at the person sitting across from you and going, this person seems perfectly safe, seems perfectly good, seems like I should be attracted to them, but you just feel like all weird about it. And you like just, Bleh, and you just have this inner feeling and you go like, why am I like this, right? Your shadow is trying to show you that all of this comes back to you, some kind of me like traumatic experience you don't remember. So <laughs> the healing experience of how you heal through that. I mean, of course, any type of energy work you like to do, any healers you like to see, any like talk therapy you like to do, all of that. Yes, very good. Do whatever it is that you feel, feel drawn to. But also um, you would be surprised to discover how much you can heal yourself by simply putting it out there like <laughs> you, you you can heal yourself um even of stuff like this simply by you know if you like to do rituals or ceremonies or meditate you can do this when you're doing those things um otherwise you can just simply do this when you're lying in bed before you fall asleep or you just ask you know just communicate to the universe if you if you want to connect to your higher self or your guides or any archangels or any gods and goddesses like whoever whoever whatever consciousness whatever being whatever you, if you want to bring in whoever you want right <laughs> but you don't even need to make it that complicated you can just put it out to the universe be like hey look okay i have this problem i have this issue like i have this feeling it feels bad <laughs> i feel like it might be rooted in some kind of trauma and then you just say i am ready to remember i am ready to see this i'm ready to re-experience it so that I can heal from it and let it go, right? Bring me the lessons I need. Show me what I need to see in order to heal from this. Show me what I need to see in order to heal from this. And that night in your dreams, it'll start coming on. <laughs> um, and yeah, so for a few days, it can suck, right? You could be have you could end up with nightmares where you are re-experiencing this. And, it, you know, it depends on how your dreams manifest, right? You, so for some of you, your, your dreams might be perfectly spot on accurate. But for most of us, I think our dreams are kind of um, analogous to what really happened. I know when I remember stuff from past lives or from repressed memories in a dream, the dream like represents what happened to me and how I felt and kind of what was happening. But things always look weird, right? Like I, I never get accurate visuals. Like people will have different faces or um, things will look like, like modern, even if they were on in a different, in a past life or in a different planet. So you don't need to get too hung up on the specific details. Um, but it's just, you work through the feelings, right? And you could even have, um, somebody show up as an animal, right? Like if you have an animal show up in your dream, 
It could be representing a person instead of uh, that animal, but that's fine. Even if you never figure out who that animal was representing, it's fine. You just need to work through it energetically, right? Work through the feelings of it, the emotions of it, just move through it. Allow yourself to process it. And after, even if you don't remember your dreams, if you wake up in the morning and you feel glah, like you have, you can feel some kind of unpleasant vibe inside of you, Try not to push it away, right? Because that'll just keep manifesting this shadow on the wall. If you can just feel it, be like, okay, this might be one of the hardest things for me to feel because at this level, like your shadow is kind of showing you your deepest, darkest fear, right? Something you you find like unfathomable, like unfathomable, so hard to face. Like this could be so hard to face. It could make you feel all of the lowest emotions, right? So take a deep breath and remember that, you know, everyone's going through this. We all go through this. We're all going, going through it together. And in fact, you can imagine if you, if you are needing support, right? Imagine reaching out into a rainbow. Imagine that there's a rainbow going all around the earth and that all of the light workers are holding hands in the rainbow and we are all here supporting each other, right? You can draw strength from this. You can draw strength from any higher dimensional being that you want. You can draw strength from the earth herself, right? Get connected, get connected while you work through this. Get so grounded, call in Mother Gaia, right? Get so connected and you, then you can face this and you can feel it. And you would be surprised, you don't actually, once you really commit to facing it and to feeling it, you typically don't need to feel it for very long. It could be a few seconds, it could be a few hours, right? It could be just a few hours at worst, right? As you feel it and maybe you have to cry it out, maybe you, Drink a bottle of wine while you're feeling it out, right? <laughs> it's fine, whatever you have to do. Feel it out and then you will find that you come to this moment of transformation. You come out the other side and then you slough off all of that dead skin and you rise and you transform the phoenix from the flame, the phoenix from the flame. So you absolutely can do this because the cool thing about shadow work is that, facing your shadow is that nothing shows up that you're not ready for, ever, right? I, I've had, in this last year, I've had to face shadow experiences that if they had come at me years ago, I would never like ever have been able to face it. And so they never, they never come up if you, if you're not ready, if you're not ready, it'll be remain so buried that you won't ever be aware of it. But since it's coming up for you, it means you're ready. It's like a rite of passage. You should be proud of yourself that you've gotten to this place that you can face this deepest, darkest fear. And that if you, if you, if you can take a deep breath and summon your courage, you can like ask the universe to show you what you need to see so that you can face it, accept that it happened, accept that it is a thing, and then you can move on from it, right? So you guys got this. I know you got this because of course you got it. You wouldn't be experiencing it if it was too much for you to handle. So I love you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hello and welcome to everybody who picked the Murder of Crows Tarot. This deck is super interesting. <laughs> it's got a theme of, it's like a Black Plague medieval dystopia. <laughs> that card is... Okay, so Five of Pentacles was like in reverse in here, like face up. We'll just keep that in mind. That is feelings of lack, feelings of scarcity. Specifically in terms of like money, abundance, um, can also be ostracized from your community, feeling like an outcast, feeling like, like there's no place for you. Let's find out what else wants to come through. Three of wands. This is probably the most depressing looking three of wands in all of tarot because it speaks to the fact that it's like there's something returning to you that you can't see, that you're not seeing because your eyes are downcast, right? Look at this person. I almost get the sense that they buried somebody here and I don't know why that's... I just get this sense that so something is buried. This person has just buried something. And then there's this white bird flying up, like this ghostly figure, right? What does this white bird represent to you? Is that something flying towards you or flying away from you? What is it a spirit of? This 
something is buried. You have buried something. What is this? Knight of Pentacles. You have buried something. You have put something behind you. And you're slowly moving on from it, but it is not like easy. It's like, listen to how slow my voice is getting. It, it feels like lead weights are on my feet. Like I'm wearing really heavy boots and that you're just like reluctantly moving on from something like so reluctantly almost <laughs> and that thumping I was just doing that really reminds me of you know in movies when they have like old Roman warships like war galleys where there'd be all of the um oarsmen rowing and they, there would be somebody beating the drum it's that kind of um reminded me of that two of wands you're looking off into your new world, but it's like you feel like you can't step through into it. Like you don't want to. You guys are like attached to the past in some kind of unpleasant way. This is like a past attachment. Maybe some of you don't even know that you're attached to this thing from the past. Three of Pentacles. Distracting yourself with work. <laughs> Six of Swords in reverse. Okay, that completely... Yeah, and the, the bottom of the deck is the Five of Cups, which is like disappointment, heartbreak, feeling like crap. But, but if you look at this person, they are kind of... They're drinking <laughs> and they're kind of screaming. It looks like they might be partying in order to drown their sorrows type of thing. Um, maybe not admitting to themselves how crappy they actually feel. So I don't know what's happened to you guys. Obviously it's different for all of you, but to just use a simple metaphor, this is somebody who like went through a breakup, but I don't really get the sense that like you were dumped. <laughs> it's like you chose to break something off because you knew it was no longer good for you and you wanted to move on from it. Whatever that is, maybe it was a job, maybe it was your home, maybe you moved, maybe you changed something deep about yourself, um, but, and you haven't really allowed yourself to grieve or come to terms with how sad you really are. This is kind of a strange message. Um, you haven't really come to terms with how traumatic the experience actually was, like how upsetting it actually was. Um, kind of like you're charging ahead and not really taking a minute to acknowledge that you have a right to be sad about this. You have a right to grieve over this experience. I'm really, really, really reminded of, so when I, um, like I used to live in Vancouver, Canada, and you know, I had my whole life there and everything was great. <laughs> well, I mean, not everything was great, but I had, I had my shit together, right? <laughs> and um, I fell in love with a guy from Seattle and we were gonna get married so that we could live in the same country and I had to move <laughs> to a new country, right? I had to move and, you know, I thought I could handle it. I thought I was gonna be like, yeah, what's the big deal? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move down, down across the border. It's gonna be fine, I got this, I'm ready for an adventure. And, you know, I was and it was all great and, uh, you know, eight years later, I still live here, still married, still awesome, <laughs> but, you know, like in hindsight, we, my husband and I were just talking about this actually. <laughs> we, both of us, both of us were kind of in shock. <laughs> we, were, we were both kind of traumatized at the kind of lengths we had to go through to be together because th there's like way, way, way more to the story that I'm not going to bother going to. But suffice to say, we had to like jump over a million hurdles and we had to like do all kinds of crazy stuff and we had to sacrifice, we each had to sacrifice essentially everything in order to be together. And here I was, a stranger in a strange land, having just completely un upended my entire life. And I just kind of kept saying, yeah, this is cool. I got this and charging ahead and um, never really stopping to process what I had just done. Um, and uh, in hindsight, I like did not handle it very well because I was ignoring how hard the whole decision to move to a new country and start over and the whole decision of 
like sacrificing my life like that, I never really processed it until like years later. Um, yeah, it, it was like five years later when I finally kind of reconciled all that. So it's kind of like that. It's like you guys made some kind of drastic decision to make a big change in your life or to move on from something. And you, maybe you've been kind of rationalizing it, right? Saying like, come on, like, it's not really that big of a deal. Like, look, everything worked out fine. Or like, I totally got this, or this is a fun adventure. Or, you know, I had no choice. I had to make that decision. However, you've been rationalizing it. It's like, yes, rationalizing it can be good, right? Sometimes you need that so that your emotions don't get out of control. And so that you can see your move through so that you can process your decision so that you can get everything handled. But at some point, like you need to stop and give yourself like time to grieve, give yourself time to like be sad about what you lost and be sad about what you left behind. Even if you, even if you would go back and make the same decision again, this isn't about doubting your decision, right? This is about processing that it was so hard. What you did was so hard. It was so hard. Like admit that, acknowledge that to yourself. It's okay. You can say that it was so hard. Maybe it was like too hard. Maybe you had no idea it was going to be the, as hard as it turned out to be, right? You had no idea it was going to be this hard, <laughs> but here you are still, still forging ahead anyway, right? Still forging ahead. <sighs> and so coming, coming back to this, six of swords in reverse. I think you're still trying to move forward. It's like you've been in this transitionary period. You moved on from something that maybe, but now you're stuck, right? Six of Swords, like normally Six of Swords is the card of movement. This person's on a boat. They're moving forward. They're moving to greener pastures. But when it's in reverse, you're stuck. You're not moving, right? You're not moving. Um, or you feel stuck. Or maybe you feel indecision. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. So your shadow is trying to show you that you can't move forward until you look back. You're stuck because you're still tied to the past. So before you continue on, you need to take a moment and look backwards at your life. Like, right, <laughs> looking backwards. What is this thing? What did you do? Is it a person? Is it a relationship that you left? Do you need closure with that person? You know, you could... Maybe you have to talk to them one more time. Maybe you just really need to go into your closet and burn all of their stuff, like have a boyfriend bonfire, right? And you might not even realize that you have their stuff in your closet, right? It may be, they could still have, you could still be energetically tied to somebody from your past and not even realize it. And that's why this is coming up. And like, if you're thinking about somebody and you're suddenly realizing, oh, you still have their book or you still have the, their love letters, it's like, get rid of that shit. I just had to do that. In fact, um, my boyfriend from like, nine years ago, I still had, and like, we're on good terms, right? But I still had some of his stuff in my closet that I like carried all of this way to a new country and still had. And I finally woke up the other day and was like, holy crap, I need to burn that shit. And I burnt it and got rid of it. And like, damn, I felt so much better after that because we were still energetically connected even after all of this time. And he was, I was like feeling his feelings. And I was like, I don't need to be feeling your feelings anymore, dude. Like, no. <laughs> so it could be something like that, right? Somebody from your past that you're still energetically tied to take steps to either, you know, you can do it physically by talking to them or sometimes going to that place. Sometimes you need that if it's like, really, you need to go there and get closure or it's just, you know, cut the cords energetically speaking. Um, now I'm thinking of like hometown and childhood. Um, some some of you if if like you really feel this is tied to your hometown and your like your childhood home um this could even be where you have like soul fragments left behind in your childhood home or like in your elementary school like some if something happened to you um in your hometown if like a specific place is coming up i mean if you can if it's nearby if you're going to be in the neighborhood um, it, might, it might benefit you to go there. You could have a soul retrieval experience. Um, I know since I live away from my hometown, right? Um, I've had several experiences of when I do go back home to visit my parents, they still live in my childhood home. Like, uh, yeah, soul retrieval. It can happen without you even like doing it. You can of course deliberately do soul retrieval. Um, man, that's a whole thing. I should maybe do, do a thing walking through soul retrieval. That's way too involved <laughs> for me to do right now. But um, suffice to say that one way of doing it uh, is just to imagine a golden ball of light around you and, and intend that the golden light is retrieving your soul fragments. And of course your soul fragments are you 
they come back to you if you're there and you ask them to, right? So you don't need to make it too complicated. But also your soul fragments can come back to you just by going to the place. And if you can't get there, if you can't go to the place, you can still get them back even without going there. Um, just imagine going there, right? Astrally travel there. And if you're not comment, uh, comfortable or confident in your ability to astrally travel, don't worry about it. Just remember that your imagination is real. Your imagination is your psychic perception. If you truly imagine really vividly, imagine being there, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells like, then you know, then you're energetically there and you can retrieve your soul fragments that way. So for so some of you, it's, it can be like that and you need to retrieve something of yourself from your past so that you can move forward. Yeah, it, it's almost, this is like, almost like you guys are in retrograde, right? Almost like you're in retrograde. Something needs to be resolved about your past so that you can move forward. Libra eye balance. Yeah. Your, right now, your past is weighing too heavily on you, right? Your past needs to come in balance with your future so that then you can walk the path of the present, which is balancing between past and future. Really fascinating. I've never really clued in that Libra can be a time energy like that. But if you're perfectly balanced between past and present, that's the ideal, right? That's the ideal. Um, I want one more card to you guys, but I don't know. Ah, there it is. Grab one of these. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> the Moonology deck. Oh, you know, I didn't use two, like, planetary astrology-themed decks for anybody else, but... That's a clue for some of you. Um, okay, that's that's the card, but um, that's a clue for some of you. Like, check out your transits. Check out your transit. What what's going on? Do you have if the, if there happens to be a planet like retrograding over your sun or over your moon? Maybe it's something else. I don't know. But check to see if there's any like significant if any of the retrograde planets. Whenever you're watching this, if they're retrograding over your sun or your moon, or they could be retrograding over your ascendant or something, you know, just, it could be, it could be who knows what, but just take, take, check for retrogrades and how they're affecting your chart right now. That could give you a big clue about like why this is all coming up for you now, right? <laughs> a fiery climax <laughs> approaches full moon in Aries. So <laughs> you guys are going to blast through this. You absolutely are. You're going to find your balance and you're going to blast forward. And you know, this boat is going to be turned upright and you're going to be moving forward. <laughs> this is your, this card came up to let you know that like, just, just keep going. You're going in the right direction. You just need to work through this. You just need to see this thing about your past. You just need to see this thing about your past and then let it go so that you can move forward, right? A fiery climax approaches. What's stopping you from climaxing, right? What is holding you back? Why can't you relax and let go and release so that you can climax? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know, take that however that resonates. It, it's some, something from the past is dragging you down. It is dragging you down like a stone and you need to let it go so that you can move forward again. That is the whatever, that's what your shadow is trying to tell you. You are stuck because the past is keeping you stuck. Let it go and then you will move on to your fiery climax and to your new experience of balance. So good luck guys, sending you so much love and light. Bye.